Hello, and welcome to the Carnegie Mellon University School of Music's production of Beatrice and Benedict by Hector Berlioz. My name is Thomas Douglas, and I'm the director of opera studies here at the university. Because of the worldwide pandemic, we've had to learn to approach the production of opera in completely new ways. We've had to learn new skills, new approaches, new modalities, and none of it would have been possible without the wonderful collaboration of all the students, faculty, staff in both the School of Music and the School of Drama. And I'm especially proud to say that we have been fortunate to have the Candace Evans, the director, to be with us during this process. She has brought a, a level of knowledge and skill that we've all grown and benefited from. And we believe you as the audience will enjoy the production today. So let me introduce her to you now, Candace Evans. I'm Candace Evans, the director for Beatrice and Benedict. When Professor Douglas called me last fall to ask about my availability to come and do this project, I was so excited because I had done uh, Le Nozze de Figaro for the department two years prior and was very happy and honored to be asked to return. So we began immediately last fall discussions with designers and plans for how to make this project happen. And then of course, COVID happened. So everything had to be changed. I was so pleased uh, with the support and encouragement that came from Carnegie Mellon and the Dean and Professor Douglas and all of the faculty to support putting this project together under COVID regulations. So what does that mean? Um, basically a lot of things. The first thing that I suggested doing was to put together a little documentary during the process of creating the piece, which is what you will see first, um, a behind the scenes peek at what it means to rehearse through Zoom, for me to be in Dallas and two of our singers to be out of state and everyone to be in their apartments to maintain safety. It's very elaborate. We did all our rehearsals via Zoom. When we finally got the project organized to go to set, I had done a film shot list like a movie, uh, describing every scene, how it should be filmed, who needed to be where, because on set, you can only have one person at a time. So even as you view the movie today, you will see multiple people on set, but that was because it's magic. One person might be told during your scene, look in this direction while their scene partner was told, look in this direction. What's remarkable and so commendable is that the singers acted into thin air and in such a beautiful, credible way. I was so proud of them and remotely so because I was here in Dallas with a Zoom connection for my director of photography, Yvonne, and my wonderful stage management crew they were my boots on the ground, holding up their iPhones so that I would have a FaceTime connection to speak to my singers, maintaining distance, making sure everyone had their mask, organizing the calls so that people could arrive on set at the right time. That in itself was no small feat because each student's um, class schedule had to be fully respected. Sometimes they had all of an hour and a half to run from, say, a physics class quickly change into their costume, check in with our costume designer via Zoom to make sure that they were assembled correctly in the costumes that had been dropped off at their apartments with no contact. Our wonderful set designer, Rosie, was available on set, which was of course not a set that she had designed and constructed, but indeed locations that she had scouted. So to sum it all up, um, I'm incredibly proud of the process, the intricacies, the details, and the outcome, which you will be able to see after the documentary. Please stay tuned for all of it. All kinds of information is coming your way. And thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Madison. I'm a baritone and a first year master's student here at Carnegie Mellon University, and I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. I will be singing the role of Don Pedro in this production of Beatrice and Benedict. And I just wanted to share, even though 
we haven't been able to rehearse in person and make music in person. I have had a very enthusiastic and very encouraging rehearsal buddy with me. I'm, and I'm going to show you her now. This is my puppy. Her name is Haley. She really loves when I sing and she's a little sweetheart. I hope you enjoy the production. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hi, my name is Hannah Wolf and I'm a current senior at Carnegie Mellon University. I am originally from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Barnstable to be specific, and even more specific, Marsons Mills. And I am a soprano playing the role of hero in Beatrice and Benedict. Hi, my name is Michael Valleycapel. I'm a first year graduate tenor here at CMU, and I will be covering the role of Benedict as well as singing chorus as Antonio. A little known fact about me is uh, when I used to live in Florida, I used to pay my rent by winning video game tournaments. Hi, my name is Megan Matioski, and I am a senior here at Carnegie Mellon University, and I'm a mezzo-soprano from Melbourne, Florida. However, I'm currently in Pittsburgh living with four other roommates, so I made this sort of practice room in our basement, which is kind of cool because basements don't exist in Florida. I will be your Ursula. Hi, my name is Kyle Collins. I'm from Chester, New Jersey. I'm a junior baritone studying voice at Carnegie Mellon University, and I will be playing Leonato in Beatrice et Benedict. Hello, my name is Madeline Saldana, but most people call me Maddie. Um, I'm a junior, and I'm from Forest Hill, Maryland, which is where I currently am and will be for the entire filming process. So I will be 100% remote, 100% of the time. I will be playing Ursul, and I am a mezzo. Hi, my name is Jordi Betancourt Vargas. I am a first year master's student at Carnegie Mellon, and I'm a baritone. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm from Managua, Nicaragua. I'm very excited to be playing the role of Claudio in this production. Um, and this little bug right here is Bella. She is getting her doctorate in being a good girl. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kaya Rose Giroux. I'm a junior vocal performance major studying at Carnegie Mellon University. I am originally from Bristol, Rhode Island. I am a soprano, and I will be portraying Beatrice in this virtual production of Beatrice and Benedict. Hi, my name is Hayden Kiefer. I'm a second year AMS student at CMU studying under Dan Teat. I'm a bass originally from Moon Township, but right now I'm recording this in my apartment in Squirrel Hill with the help of my roommate. I'll be playing the role of Somarone, who makes a fun appearance at the end of the show. My AMS this year is in sound recording, so I will be a recording engineer alongside Ricardo Schultz, recording the singers that you hear tonight. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Camille. I also go by Liz. I'm from Connellsville, Pennsylvania, and I'm a senior vocal performance major. I will be singing Beatrice in this production of Beatrice and Benedict, and I am a soprano. Hello, my name is Dusan Grubišić, and this is my second year of master's degree. I am originally from Novi Sad, Serbia in Europe. In this French opera production, my role is going to be Benedict, and my voice type is tenor. Although when I speak, it might sound like a baritone. This is going to be a very interesting adventure for me and for all of us because this opera production is going to happen virtually and I will be doing it from Houston, where I happen to be when the corona pandemic started. I hope that this is going to be a rewarding experience for all of us and that we will learn much more about French culture and language. If you want to come across as a unique individual and somebody who interprets a score, you must do the humble work of delving into the score. What's your first language? Uh, Serbian. Serbian, okay. Yes. All it's right. Interesting to learn uh, French opera through English and my first language is Serbian, but it's also exciting. I, I, I wrote uh, hand all those lines and the first one in French, then English word to word, then uh, poetic English, then Serbian, then IPA, of course. So right. it's crazy. It's like it's on a big circling egg. It's going to go back up to the next high number. Two, one, four, three, two, one, two, one. 
Four three two one two one. Four three two one two one. Four three two one two one. Préférez le couvent. Préférez le couvent. Préférez le couvent. Yes, it's about assigning priority to some syllables. Two things we're going to do here. One, because it's it's kind of a lot of muscle confusion, right, for the voice. So we're just going to plug it in and see what happens, trying to get the range to really grow. But at the same time, more importantly, stabilizing the bottom. E, 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 e. Okay? Okay. Light and bright. E, 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 e. That's right. Do it early. Yes. Okay. Later. Please go back and hear that one. Okay. I will tell you what I'm going to analyze for you what you did. Okay. You put, this is very important. It will work in every language. You put your double F of Führer on the end of Le. Okay. The structure uh, to a virgin ear literally sounded like le f. Okay. That's exactly what I want. Okay. Open the mouth in the M so that it's perfumey. Um, um, okay, okay. I. Yeah. Mm. Right. Just don't sit on your M, but that was better. And the reason you're leaving the M is to say attendria, but with no glottal. Right. Tout séduit en elle. Just say that. Tout séduit en elle. Good. Now put all the intention here. Tout séduit en elle. Tout séduit en elle. Tout séduit en elle. That was glorious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the French style. Okay. <laughs> so Kaya, you sound fabulous, and I, I mean that. It's, it's really quite good. And the place that we tried to fix at the very beginning rhythmically, you did it exactly right. Thank but you. there was one other place that, that had that same kind of problem. Do you remember where that it was? It was the Vukuhe What measure is that? Uh, um, measure. 127-ish, 128. 127, 128. I've been having a hard time lining it up with the uh, oh, yeah. trap. Well, what, what happens is he doesn't really slow down. And this is her aria where she lets go and takes, like, it, this is where she throws away all those preconceived notions that she has about marriage and love, and she just kind of throws herself all in. I love it. I love it. It's great. Um, Go with that. That's that's beautifully said. That was great. Okay. Especially the duh. What did that feel like though? To to do that duh that time. It kind of felt a little out of control. It sounded good. We're not diminishing the voice. We're not lightening the voice. We're not um, diminuendoing. Mm -hmm. We're letting go. Okay. Letting go is the hardest thing to do in life. Yeah. And in art. So one more time into your into your cozy ponchos and blankets and Afghans. We should have requisitioned matching CMU blankets for all of you. Pick up take on Ursula and Hero from the Fire Company. <laughs> <clears throat> but are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says Don Pedro and my new trothed lord. But I persuaded them never to let Beatrice know of it. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do uh, is provide for you a structure 
So you kind of know what's going to happen before we get to filming, because when we are on set, it's, it's difficult to communicate and we're also working against a ticking clock. So if we can be expedient in our understanding of the goal of the scene, that's going to be really helpful. My name is Rosie Bolano and I'm the scenic designer for Beatrice at Benedict. So one of the first things we did when we started this production back in March was I looked for emotional imagery for the opera. So what did this opera feel like and what was the kind of general world that we wanted it to live in? And looking for images that reminded me of the opera. Um, and one of the things that I kept coming back to over and over and over and over was the images of flowers and gardens and natural beauty and spring and growth. And so at the very beginning, I, I just kind of set it aside and thought, okay, we'll come back to this. Um, it's good research. And then uh, as we started to look at the period, 1940s France, we realized that the whole country had kind of been ravaged by the war. And so looking at the country, what would it have meant for these characters to live through that period? And how did that hardship affect them? And then kind of connecting back to the initial research became the question of like, where is the balance between this growth and the war that had just happened? Um, because we wanted to acknowledge the war but also this is a story about finding love and finding community and finding happiness during a period of tremendous hardship. Um, and so after COVID hit, that story became a lot more poignant for all of us as we began to kind of understand better what these characters were going through. And it definitely changed the way I experienced the play, I experienced the opera because um, we ourselves were trying to look through love and community in a time of a lot of stress um, when it kind of felt like death was all around us in a way that might not have been dissimilar um, from World War II. Um, so when this production changed from a stage design that would have gone up in the Trotsky to a film, um, the, our first priority was safety. Our very, very first thing that we wanted to do was make sure that everyone was safe, that there was nothing, and that we were prepared for all possible scenarios. Um, so one of the kind of major points of that transition were, could we even film in Pittsburgh? Did we need to use green screen? Um, did we, what options did we have in this new format? And it kind of felt like we were building an airplane while we were flying it, um, which is kind of scary, um, but also kind of exciting because um, getting to change and do something different um, is always a good challenge. Um, so moving forward, kind of once we had more information, we started to look for locations in Pittsburgh. and thinking about what initially we wanted to look, this world to look like and then trying to find locations to match that. And we have been so tremendously lucky to find the gardens in Mellon Park, um, which have this fantastic hedge-like quality, uh, which really reminded me of the gardens that I was looking at in France, um, to a bridge in Shenley Park, to looking at the interior and how could we create Hero's little kind of perfect little world that she could live in. Um, so it kind of, the whole process became kind of about adaptation and flexibility in learning how to create a world that was both period accurate and fit all of our needs for uh, safety and um, COVID guidelines and actually in some ways those changed the design. Um, so one of the difficulties we ended up having was looking for an interior that could serve as Leonardo's home. And so we, because we couldn't find an, an interior hall that would allow us to film um, due to COVID restrictions, we ended up setting that outside. And I'm actually very happy with the change that we made and the location that we found for that scene. 
Um, so overall, these stories are still the same. It's still the story of people coming back and community and growth. Um, it's just that COVID, I would say, in some ways enhanced that story. It just changed the story and it changed how it was going to be presented. And so one of the key things I found in my research that I think affected our whole kind of style of production is this idea of mend and make do. Um, so looking at the fact that the boys might have come home a few days and then the wedding's happening very quickly. And that kind of feels a lot like how we're working on this production is kind of with an attitude of mend and make do. Like, you got to do it yourself, and um, if it's going to happen. Hi, my name is Zhang Yu, and I am the costume designer for our production of Beatrice and Benedict. Beatrice and Benedict is a retelling of Shakespeare's comedy, Much Udo About Nothing. And this time, the story is set in France after World War II. I choose to focus at the first stage of my design on the joy that came at the end of the war and the gradual recovery and uh, uh, regrowth of the post-war world. This perspective gave me my initial inspirations and passion and also navigated my design. In my earlier research, I was deeply affected and inspired by photos of women excitedly welcoming the returning soldier, who were their lovers, husbands, and a family. You can see people were hugging and kissing each other um, for of happiness and joy. At that sparkling moment, the beauty, tenderness, vividness of women contrasts sharply with the seriousness, solemnness, and masculinity of the military. The contrast between different people and different characters became as an important point in my design as it progressed. To me, the internal and the external difference of characters are the source of the conflict and humor in this opera. For the design of the soldiers, such as Benedict, Claudio, and Don Pedro, I give them details and variations on their military uniforms. Claudio wears high boots and a leather belt most of the time, having a more battling look. Benedict is in a leather jacket, which gives him a relaxing and casual feeling. Don Pedro, who has the highest rank in the army, will always dress formally. These different dressing styles not only help to create variation among the characters, but also indicate the difference of their rank, status, and even personality. The contrast between Hero and Beatrice is another focus in my design. Hero is more um, traditional, tender, innocent, and docile, while Beatrice is modern, independent, sharp, and capable. They are both charming and lovable women but so different to each other. I differentiated them by color, pattern, texture, and clothing style, which for me reflected the difference of their inner world. This also includes the, the reasoning behind their different ideas of what love and marriage means. The pandemic had a huge effect on our opera, causing it to change from a stage performance to a film-like digital format. To adapt to this change, I put more attention into the variation and the details of fabric and, and color to give it a more realistic visual quality. At the same time, in order to ensure everyone's safety, we are strictly controlling the number of crew who make contact with the costumes. Everyone must walk, keeping in mind social distancing, and everyone wears a mask. All the fittings were done remotely. These measures were of course a big challenge, but they were also given an, an opportunity to explore the approach, and, approach design and theater in a new way. 
This was a brand new experience to me, which makes this production one of the most special and memorable one I've ever had. I would not have been able to rise to this challenge without the help of our team. So I want to thank the director, Kenneth Evans, and all the actors who provided their support and stellar collaboration to the process. Also, I want to thank my unparalleled costume team for their exceptional work and support. Hi, I'm Kristen Ward. I'm the props assistant here at uh, CMU School of Drama. This has been a very different semester for us. Uh, instead of uh, where we would normally have about eight people working in our shop at once, uh, we've had a pretty skeleton crew. Uh, it's been myself and Todd Kulik, the props manager, and we have uh, some GAs who have been helping us as well. We have been wearing our masks while we work. Uh, and we've also been doing a lot more remotely. We've been having a lot of Zoom meetings instead of face-to-face. -face. Um, and with this new virtual format, uh, we're working more in film than on stage. So there have been a lot of differences. For instance, normally you would see something like a wedding cake just up on stage from 20 feet away. And now we have to really think about uh, what the details are uh, as the camera will zoom in. One of the props you'll see in Beatrice and Benedict is uh, this lovely wedding cake. Uh, we got our topper in. It's an actual vintage lace uh, wedding cake topper. But the groom is in just a regular black tuxedo, so I've been working on painting him uh, to sort of match the actor's military dress. So I'm going in right now and working on um, adding a little bit of green to his jacket. And then once he's dry, I'll do some khaki for the pants and shirt, uh, maybe a couple of little gold details. start at the same spot, mm -hmm. just before your duet comes in, you'll hear the piano introduction. of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while. Lost it. Lost it. You have put him down, lady.
I learn in this letter that Don Pedro comes this night, and that he hath bestowed much honor on young Claudio. I pray you, is Signor Montanto returned from the wars or no? My cousin means Signor Benedict. Oh, he's returned. He hath done good service, lady, in these wars. And a good soldier, too, lady. And a good soldier to a lady. But what is he to a lord? I see, lady. The gentleman is not in your books. No. And he were. I would burn my study. Don Pedro is approached. Good Signor Leonato, you are come to meet your trouble. Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. And I think this is your daughter. Her mother hath many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you ask her? I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die while she hath such meat food as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to Disdain if you come in her presence. It is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. But truly, I love none. A dear happiness to women, else they would have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. <laughs> Claudio and Benedict, my dear friend Leonato hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here at least a month. Please it, your grace, lead on. We will go together. Keep your way in God's name. I have done. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. Come on, Ludita, pure di morir. Vous êtes vivant. Come on, Ludita, pure di morir. Vous êtes vivant. On le verrait naître s'il n'existait pas. Oh, 
Hmm. Benedict, didst thou note the daughter of Leonato? I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her, that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. In mine eye, she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? Is come to this? Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Look, Don Pedro is returned to seek you. What hath held you here, that you followed not to Leonato's? He is in love with Hero, Leonato's daughter. That she is worthy, I know. And thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in despite of beauty. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But I will do myself the right to trust none. I will leave a bachelor. <laughs> I shall see thee. Ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. Il 
Ko Saule diabla ma porta va mete, ko minja se njer si su tuam se moze kri. Isim lova Benedict. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. Such a man is Claudio. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? I think not. One woman is fair, yet I'm well. Another is wise, yet I'm well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise, or I'll none. Virtuous, or I'll never cheapen her. Fair, or I'll never look on her. Mild, or come not near me. Noble, or not I for an angel. Of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be of what color it please God. See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Oh, very well, my lord. Leonato, what was it you told me of, that your niece, Beatrice, was in love with Signor Benedict? I did never think that lady would have loved any man. Nor I, but most wonderful that she loves him past the infinite of thought. Hath she made her affection known to Benedict? To what end? He would make sport of it and torment the poor lady. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it. For the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. Well, I am sorry for your niece. Let there be the same net spread for Beatrice. The sport will be when they hold an opinion of another's dotage. Love me, why it must be requited. They say the lady is fair, tis a truth, and virtuous, tis so, I cannot reprove it, and wise, but for loving me. I may chance have some remnants of wit broken on me, because I have railed so long against marriage, but doth not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth that he cannot endure in his age. Shall these paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humor? No, the world must be peopled. When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. Beatrice, 
yeux Le feu de ses yeux Le feu de ses yeux Sa grâce agaçate Son esprit si fort Son charme d'immense Tout séduit en elle By my troth, niece, thou wilt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. Send me no husband, for which blessing I am upon my knees every morning and evening. Yes, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, as it please you. But yet for all that, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, as it please me. Well, niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. No. Uncle, I'll none. Adam's sons are my brethren. And truly, I hold it a sin to match in my kindred. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it. He wanted of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. You have put him down, lady. You have put him down. So I would not he should do me, my lord, lest I should prove the mother of fools. <laughs> In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Yea, my lord. I thank it, poor fool. It keeps me on the windy side of care. But I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. To be merry best becomes you, for out of question you were born in a merry hour. No, sure, my lord, my mother cried. But then there was a star danced, and under that I was born. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says Don Pedro and my new troth lord. But I persuaded them never to let Beatrice know of it. <laughs> Why did you so? Disdain and scorn right sparkling in her eyes. She cannot love. She is so self-endeared. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, certainly it were not good she knew his love, lest she make sport at it. Why, you speak truth. I never yet saw man, but she would spell him backward. So turns she every man the wrong side out. Therefore, let Benedict consume away in size. What fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much. Contempt, farewell. And Benedict, love on. I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. Yeah. 
I warrant you, we have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by haps. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. Vous Je n'ai plus songé, sans trembler, malgré moi. Claudia, Claudia, je ne dois qu'être Good morrow. I must go hence and dress for the wedding. Make all the preparations, Samarone. Certo, signore. And si raccusa, accusa, una grande chaleur au cœur du notrila. Le notrila de Sicile vive ce bamo fa si fa. Mais la plus noble flamme, tout sa lame, comme au cœur du buveur. C'est la liqueur, c'est la liqueur, la liqueur vermeille de la treille, des coteaux de masala qu'elle Le vin, le vin, le vin fin de Syracuse, le vin de Syracuse à cause. Si certo, le vin de Syracuse, Le vin de Syracuse Le vin de Syracuse accuse Une grande chaleur au cœur de notre île De notre île de Sicile Vive ce fameux vin si fin Mais la plus noble flamme La plus noble flamme, tout son lame que du buveur. C'est la liqueur, c'est la liqueur vermeille de la treille, des 
Wouldst thou come when I call thee? Yea, Signor, and depart when you bid me. But stay till then. Then, tis spoken. Fare you well now. Thou and I are too wise too peaceably. L'amore ta flavo. L'amore di ne flamme. Aff fule. Chi vian se tu. Chi pri. Chi brilla e dispare, pure grino trome. Attira lui le so, e la raffu. Folia pretuvo mia che sottise. Folia pretuvo mia che sottise. Adoro nudo, adoro nudo, e tua cura dice. Ora sta sulla fu, ora sta sulla fu. Oh! 